Why did your ex rebound so fast? That's what we're going to be talking about today. But first, my name is Clay with ModernLove.Life. And we are here to help you, of course, get the great loving relationship that you deserve without having to play mind games, play hard to get, or pretend to be someone or something that you are not because you deserve to be loved for the unique, amazing, and wonderful person that you are. Um, so yeah, this is obviously my first live stream since coming back. You can see the, the usual wall back but there behind me. Um, weird time, weird time. But we'll, you know, I made the whole video yesterday. So if you watched it, you, you know what's going on. But anyway, um, we're here to talk about um, why your ex rebounded so fast. And when this happens, it can be really frustrating for a lot of people. You know, you might be thinking, hey, did they ever really love me in the first place? Is this maybe new relationship somehow more real or more authentic or maybe it's the real deal or something? Because it sure seems like they're really in love. It seems like they're really head over heels. Whereas, you know, maybe you and your ex, it took months or, or weeks or years for you to get to that level of commitment with um, you know, maybe moving in together or being official or uh, maybe even getting ready to talk about things like marriage or stuff like that. But then here they're doing that in a fraction of, a t of, of the time. So what's going on? Is this just somehow more real than what they had with you? Or is there maybe something else in the equation? And the truth is, is that there's probably something else in the equation. Um, whatever painful story you might be telling yourself about how they just easily replaced you or how they moved on so fast or how anything else could be going on. Um, I want you to suspend that for a little bit and just hear me out when it comes to all of this stuff, because I think by the time that we hit the end of this video, you should hopefully understand your ex a little bit more, a little bit more about maybe why they're doing what they're doing and how it probably has nothing to do with you. So uh, the first thing is that after a breakup, people often feel this compulsion to get into a relationship as quickly as possible. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that. We're gonna go into those in this video, but um, people feel this need to be in a relationship. Um, probably one of the main reasons for that is this sort of sense that we need to compete with our ex to see who can get into a relationship first, or who can seem like they're more successful, or who can seem like they came out on top because of the breakup, or who can seem like uh, they're more desirable, or who can seem like uh, they, they, they got a line around the block of people wanting to date them and commit to them, or whatever it might be. Um, I don't necessarily agree with this, but this is how a lot of people think about things following a breakup. They will, um, believe that there's this sort of competition to either justify the breakup. Oh, look at me. I, I'm dating someone first. Therefore I'm obviously more desirable or, oh yeah, you're having a hard time. That must mean that, you know, you really are the, a, a loser or a jerk or something. Right. So, um, there's, of course, this, this aspect of competition. And again, just because someone gets into a relationship uh, doesn't mean that they are more desirable. Just because someone gets into a relationship doesn't mean that they came out of the breakup better or anything like that. So I want you to fall into that game. I don't want you to fall into that way of thinking because it is not in any way... Um, true. And it's also not helpful for you to, to get lost in that kind of thinking. Um, your ex may buy into that line of thinking, but don't, don't feel compelled to believe that there's this sort of competition that you have to have with them. Um, because it's not true. Um, this doesn't have anything to do with the strength of feeling that they have for their partner, their rebound. This doesn't have anything to do with the strength of feeling that they might have for um, 
the new relationship that they're in or anything of, along those lines. This is just a reflection of them trying to make it seem like they have moved on quickly because there's this sort of competition. There's this sort of drive to make it seem like you've moved on fast. You've got the better end of things in the breakup. You are somehow more desirable, all that sort of stuff. And what this really is, if you want to boil this all down and start looking at what's really going on with them here is, um, I, guess, I guess before we go ahead and get into all of that, if you like this video, please make sure you hit the thumbs up button for uh, YouTube. It helps us out. If you're not already subscribed, maybe think about subscribing as well too, and make sure you hit that bell icon as well too, so that you can get notified um, when we publish new videos and go live in the future. Um, but, but what this is really all about is about emotional unavailability. Um, because you see, when you are in a relationship with someone for reasons that go beyond just what is happening between you and that person, beyond just the connection that you have with them, that is, you know, basically emotional unavailability, whether it's some story you're telling yourself about, hey, look at me, I moved on faster, or hey, look at me, um, I, I came out ahead, obviously emotional unavailability. Um, but there's also other ways that we can have emotional unavailability too, where it's like, okay, I'm having a relationship with this person for other reasons. Like, you know, Hey, look at me, I'm dangerously close to 30 or 40 or whatever. Um, and I need to be in a relationship. Otherwise I'm going to be a failure. Okay. That's emotional unavailability. Or I need to get married because, you know, TikTok, I'm getting close to some sort of milestone, um, emotional unavailability as well too. Or, you know, hey, I'm tired of my mom complaining about how I'm single. I need to be in a relationship. You're a warm per you're a warm body with a pulse that's not so bad to look at. Okay, emotional unavailability. Or I need to tell myself some story about how I'm over my ex or how um, you know, I upgraded to someone better, or I'm with someone who's more compassionate or whatever. Okay, all emotional unavailability. If it's based on anything other than just, hey, you're someone that I like we have a connection, we seem pretty compatible, then it's basically emotional unavailability. So this is why your ex has probably rebounded so quickly is because they're driven by this emotional unavailable need to make meaning out of this breakup. And so what we want to do is we want to um, understand that uh, this that it's very common for most people to be emotionally unavailable after a breakup. Probably most people are going to be emotionally unavailable temporarily after a breakup. Um, just got to get the microphone out of the way. You know, uh, when I was, I've, I've been gone in Mexico for so long that the spring on my microphone stand kind of like sprung back. And so now I have to like kind of get used to bending it back in place. But anyway, um, most people are emotionally unavailable, at least temporarily after a breakup. And so we need to understand that if your breakup was, you know, recent, that your ex is probably emotionally unavailable. Okay. Um, I guess, hypothetically, if they were some sort of, you know, Zen monk or something like that, then they probably might have the capacity to process their emotions very quickly. And then, um, move forward without carrying emotional unavailability into whatever they're doing. But chances are that's not your ex and chances are they are emotionally unavailable and thus any rebound relationship that they find themselves in is going to be a reflection of that. But the other side of the coin with all of this is that you may also be struggling with some degrees of emotional unavailability as well too. That's to say you might be saying like, okay, I need to save this relationship because uh, you know, I, back for me, it was like, okay, you know, we were that couple. We were that couple in high school that was just always together. All of our friends thought we were we were obnoxiously cute. Uh, they thought we were going to be like the one, you know, the, the the high school sweethearts that make it, defy the odds, and all that sort of stuff. And I was kind of attached to that story. And when we broke up, I was concerned that that might not be happening. And so. Um, when I was trying to get back together with her, at least that, that, that initial first time, 
I was emotionally unavailable in that regard because I was more attached to this story than I was to any connection that we had with her. I also had all sorts of other issues, you know, wh whatever. We can get into that some other time. But um, we want to make sure that that we are also processing our emotions in a healthy kind of way as well, too, so that we're not being pulled by emotional unavailability and, um, you know, our own our own inclination towards that, which is, you know, why we want to make sure we address things like damage control mode, um, attachment phase, uh, all that sort of stuff, right? In some of those earlier five stages that, you know, we go through. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's important to recognize that this is going on. And, you know, you want to make sure that you're uh, uh, addressing this as well, too, because if you and your ex are to get back together, you don't want that to be a rebound either. Now, you know, rebound relationships can be difficult for a lot of reasons, but it's really this emotional unavailability that makes them so challenging and so difficult. I mean, you don't need me to tell you that rebound relationships have a really poor track record. I think most people know that. Um, but the reason why they have such a poor track record is because people often get into the relationship too fast. You know, they're displacing a lot of the emotions that they um, experienced um, with you, the level of commitment, the closeness and all that sort of stuff. And they're just placing that onto this new partner and fast forwarding that relationship to about the same level that feels comfortable for them. Um, they're doing that as sort of a, a, a form of emotional unavailability. And so we want to make sure that we're aware of that and, and addressing it appropriately. Um, and what we want to do is we want to deal with our emotions, get ourselves out of damage control mode and make sure that we're in a good, healthy place. And then what we all want to also do is encourage our partner as we're kind of getting in contact with them and working through things with them and connecting with them. We want to encourage them to pull their focus into the present moment. And the only way you're going to actually be able to do this is if you are yourself as well too, present. That's why we have, you know, for, for many, many, many years now, advocated people practice these advanced relational skills like, you know, present moment awareness and all that sort of stuff. We have a whole playlist on advanced relational skills. You can check it out right up there. Um, but uh, uh, we really want to make sure that we're emphasizing these things that are going to bring us into the present moment, because that's when we're going to be able to pull ourselves and pull our ex out of these emotionally unavailable attachments and stories and who knows whatever else they might be uh, motivating them to rebound or to, you know, whatever, whatever might be motivating us to get back together with them. We're going to be able to pull our emotion and attention out of these things, you know, judgments of ourselves, judgments of others, the past and the future, and pull it into the present moment so that we can actually form a strong and meaningful emotional bond with them. And when that happens, that's when we can actually have a emotionally available connection with someone and really break this, this chain of rebounds, this chain of, you know, getting back together, but then breaking up a month later and all that sort of stuff. Right. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, with that being said, let's go ahead and check out the, the, the comments for today. Still getting back in the swing of things here in the United States. Um, let's see. We got uh, uh, Nazifo, I guess. I'm not going to try to pronounce that one. Uh, apparently, I just did. Anyway, uh, she says, uh, I'm sorry for leaving this topic. I want to know, can a relationship work after a super traumatic breakup, especially for the one who was dumped, then getting back together after a few months? Yeah, yeah. I mean, again... All it takes for two people to be in a relationship is for them to both agree to, to be in a relationship. And like, if you want to be in a relationship with someone, okay, that's half of the thing right there. All that's needed is for them to agree to be in a relationship with you and boom, you've got a relationship. Um, now, one of the problems with rebound relationships, I, I just remembered, I forgot to bring this up, but one of the problems for rebounder relationships is that, um, you know, many times we get in too fast into the relationship. We get in over our heads and we realize that we don't actually have a real connection with the other person 
and that we're more in a relationship with some sort of idea, some sort of idea of like, wow, this person's way hotter than my ex or wow, look at me. I moved on first or, um, you know, uh, wow, isn't my mom going to be so happy that I'm finally, you know, with someone before I turned 30 or, you know, whatever it might be. And so if that's your motive or your ex's motive for being in a rebound relationship, for being in a relationship, you're like, hey, that's why the rebound relationships often struggle is because rather than taking this nice, slow, organic uh, progress that most relationships take, we get in too far, too fast. We get in over our heads and then we start to realize, oh my goodness, who is it I committed to? I don't know who you are. And then that's when a lot of the problems creep in and the relationship then crumbles apart. But yeah, yeah, no, uh, going back to the question here, it's totally possible to, uh, you know, make a relationship work. Um, that, that, that depends on what you mean by work. But uh, like, obviously, if it's just like, hey, we are still in a relationship. Um, yeah, all it takes is two people agreeing to be in a relationship. But in order to have a thriving relationship, yeah, you can make that work too. But you have to be able to um, have good communication. You know, I, I guess there was some sort of trauma here. I don't know exactly what that means. But you have to be able to have good communication. You have to be able to build trust amongst yourselves. And you have to be able to do what you need to do to, to, to bridge that gap. You know, we talk about putting these three things in place inside of um, effortless connection, modernlove.life slash EC. Check that out down in the description box below. Um, but anyway, you know, it's the three things. You want to be on the same team. You want to build strong communication and you want to build trust between each other. If you can have those three things in place, then, you know, that's what it takes for a relationship to, to work in the long term. But um, yeah, hope that helped you out there. Um, Gemma says, hey, hey there. I recognize you from, from Instagram. Um, Edward says, what do you do when the rebound and her family become enablers? Okay, so the most important thing here <clears throat> is just that you stay focused on the quality of the connection that you have between your ex and yourself. Okay, you don't need to try to manage all of these third parties. You don't need to try to you know, put someone down or make everyone think that so-and-so is terrible or bad news or anything like that. You don't need to do that. Um, the rebound is going to shake out. However, the rebound is going to shake out. Rebound relationships do not have a great track record. We've already discussed why that is. Um, but again, people can just sort of like white knuckle it and make the relationship work because again, all it takes is two people deciding to be in a relationship. But um, if you're getting in too far, too fast over your head, and then you realize, hey, wait a minute, I don't know who this person is, that is very problematic. If you couple that with, okay, here's my ex connecting with me, being a you know normal, chill, cool, easygoing person, we're actually able to have a strong emotional connection, um, we're getting closer together, all that sort of stuff. I mean, it's, 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 you're doing what you need to do to make it easy for them to choose you. Let's just put it that way. Um, because when the, the rebound relationship starts to encounter the challenges and difficulties that it may have, then, um, <clears throat> then if you're showing up as someone who is easy to connect to and is able to bring your partner back into that present moment, then you're going to be able to form a real emotional connection with them rather than a rebound sort of emotionally unavailable connection. Okay. You don't need to manage everyone else. They'll take care of themselves. You just need to show up as someone who is easy to connect to and easy to get along with and easy to have an emotional bond with. And when that happens, oftentimes everything else just takes care of itself as we've talked about in many videos, as we've gone over with the decoy effect and everything like that. Um, Pale King says, uh, yeah, hope your mom is well. Yeah, thanks. Thanks there, buddies. And that, thanks for the message yesterday on YouTube. Um, yeah, as far as I know, she's she's doing pretty well. She's finally acquiesced and watched uh, the movie Frozen yesterday. Um, apparently, she has learned that in order to relate to my three-year-old daughter, she needs to watch the movie Frozen. <laughs> so she did. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Might, might go out and see her uh, this weekend. Who knows? Um, 
but yeah, as far as I can tell, she's good. She's doing fine. Still waiting for those follow up um, doctor appointments to see if everything's okay with her. But at least as far as I can tell, she seems to be herself. She seems to be doing okay. She seems to be um, doing fine. Um, let's see. Mateo says, what does it mean when my ex moved on fast and now has a boyfriend, but still spies on my social media? Again, rebound, rebound. Um, probably driven by the competition thing, if nothing else. I mean, it could be other things as well, too. Maybe she misses you. Maybe she realizes she made a mistake. But if like nothing else, it's the competition thing. You know, it's like, okay, here I am. I got a new boyfriend. But like, what's Mateo up to? You know, is he seeing anyone? Is he like, you know, finally getting his life in order and doing the things that he said he was going to do or whatever? Um, Because, again, people often do feel this sense of competition with their exes. And she may be buying into that. So um, that's that's one take on it. Of course, she could be missing you. Of course, she could be like, eh, what did I do? Why did I get with this one guy? Uh, I miss Mateo. He was so much better in all these other ways. What is he up to? I miss him, right? So it, it could be all that. But if nothing else, I'm sure she's just um, trying to see where you're at in life. Uh, Joshua says, hey, Clay, my ex broke up with me and said that she will talk to me once things are better. It has been three months now and she hasn't spoken to me. She doesn't want to talk to me. Please advise. OK, so has she reached out to you or have you reached out to her in that period of time? If not, um, you know, if you're just kind of like waiting for her to reach out to you, I might consider just checking in on her, just being like, hey, I know it's been a while and I know there's a lot of, um, you know, emotions that you might be feeling about her breakup, but, you know, I just wanted to see how you've been doing and just check in with you and see if uh, you might feel comfortable just chatting as friends with no agenda or anything like that. And just see how, how she responds to that. Um, because she, she might want to talk to you, but, you know, just because of all sorts of other things, pride or whatever, she might not be reaching out to you. Plus there's also the whole um, societal belief that, women should not initiate things. And so she might just be not initiating things because of that. I mean, you know, there's this whole societal belief that, you know, women need to be passive and that passivity equals femininity. Not true. If you're a woman, I think you can be active and I think you can actually put yourself out there and still be feminine at the same time. You don't just need to just, you know, like lay there like a dead fish and just wait for like some guy to make the first move. Yeah, guys can make the first move and hopefully they do. But I want you to also feel empowered to um, do whatever you need to do for you as well, too, because you can and you should. And you're probably going to be less frustrated if you actually do make the first move. Um, let's see. The Pale King continues with uh, or I, 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 I guess actually asks a question. Um, my ex was in a rebound, but uh, broke up at the end of November, and she seems uh, to get crushes left, right, and then, and like a teenage schoolgirl, but now our connection is growing by the day, so it is going well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, um, as long as you're focusing in on how you and her are connecting, you're doing what you need to do. She's going to choose to be with you or, you know, anyone here listening to this, your ex is going to choose to be with you because the two of you have a good quality connection. Okay. At least for the right reasons, they're going to choose to be with you for that. Um, it's not going to be because you have eliminated the rebound or because you've isolated them from any other potential romantic prospects. Uh, I mean, I don't know, I guess those things could work, but you know, you can't do that forever, right? You can't just be like, okay, I'm going to, somehow make it so no guy is ever interested in you. I'm going to like, I don't know, block your phone number or something on everyone in the world's phone. I don't know. Um, but you can't necessarily do that and have that be sustainable because eventually she's going to be able to interact with someone. And if she feels something, she'll, she'll try to connect with that person. Um, you can't always be there to police your ex, but if you focus in on having a strong emotional connection that's what it's going to take to have that bond that 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 really you know brings the two of you closer together and allows the two of you to um, actually start a new relationship that's that's a strong relationship, not just like a rebound relationship in and of itself, but actually allows the two of you to start a relationship for the right reasons, which is like, hey, we're connected, we have we're compatible, we're all of these sorts of things, not like, oh yeah, wouldn't it be great if we could work out and beat the odds or you know 
whatever whatever thing uh, you might. That that was my thing. That was my thing. Um, at least during our first breakup. Um, maybe that's your thing too. Maybe it's someone else's thing. But anyway, I uh, hope that helps you out there, buddy. Um, <clears throat> Bonnie says he rebounded uh, with her because he was already having an affair online while I was sick with cancer, um, but he never married her, still in touch with me. Uh, yes, people say I'm a fool. Well, that's, that's, that's terrible. I'm sorry that he was um, having an affair with her while you were sick with cancer. That is definitely not uh, cool and probably not in integrity for most people out there. But, um, you know, yeah, uh, uh, if someone's already having an affair, obviously, yeah, that's, that, 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 is, that is a rebound because they're using the affair they're using the the other person as an escape from whatever they're feeling with you like you know if he's feeling stuck in his life or if he's feeling powerless or if he's feeling like something's missing then he's going to this other person probably because that person is offering something that he's not getting or doesn't believe that he's getting from the relationship with you and so then um you know that's that's often how affairs start and so that is in a lot of ways a rebound relationship because we're not necessarily looking at the full picture here we're just saying like hey i don't feel x in my relationship at home you know whatever respect or valued or something and you're making me feel that way like never mind everything else going on um i feel valued here you you seem like an attractive person let's get together um, I'm sorry about the whole, you know, him having an affair on you while you were sick and all that sort of stuff. I hope you're feeling better. I hope you have gotten over your cancer. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, maybe that gives you a little bit of insight into maybe what he was experiencing during all of this. <clears throat> um, let's see. The A says we were together for three years. She broke up with me. Uh, and after two weeks, she got into a rebound and that lasted two months. She is more heartbroken about that rebound uh, than about our breakup. What does this mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that can really happen. Um, if your ex has a rebound relationship, it's happening because they're trying to tell themselves a story. You know, oh, look at me. I moved on from this thing that I had with my ex and I moved on so fast. Therefore, I must be so desirable. I must be so cool. My ex was in the wrong or whatever, right? And then when that rebound relationship comes apart and falls apart, your ex is then confronted with the idea that this story that they were trying to create for themselves may not be true. And so that can be even more devastating because, you know, they're looking for an escape from the heartbreak that they had after your relationship with the rebound. And then if that rebound didn't play out and fulfill whatever they were looking for um, in that rebound, you know, in terms of validation or whatever, then that can be very, very, uh, I guess the term would be deflating for them. And they might feel very devastated because now they have to deal with the breakup that they had with you and they have to deal with the breakup of the rebound relationship. But on top of that, they also have to deal with the possibility that the story they wanted to tell themselves isn't true. And so rather than just, you know, breaking up with someone, dealing with the breakup, going through those emotions and dealing with them in a healthy way, she's dealing with a second breakup and a sort of, uh, failing of a story narrative that she was trying to tell herself on top of that. So that can be very, very, very emotionally difficult for someone. Um, did she deserve it? I don't know. Maybe. I don't, I don't know all the details, but um, that could be why she's in so much uh, emotional distress. Um, what's he got a couple minutes here? Uh, Pale King. Yeah, I've got time for you, buddy. Okay. Um, uh, you say, I saw her yesterday and today. Only reason I am not now seeing her tomorrow is because she has an upset stomach and does not want me to get it. Sorry, I got too press said. <laughs> okay, so, um, um, yeah, I mean, it sounds like you're, you're connecting pretty well if you're seeing each other on most days. Um, but I guess you got sick somehow. So, makes sense, especially 
with the state of the world these days, you know, don't want to necessarily spread illnesses and all that stuff. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> with that being said, everyone, um, thanks so much. If you want to learn more about um, rebound relationships, please feel, feel free to check out this video series over here. And if you're not already, please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel as well, too. Anyway, with that being said, take care, and I'll talk to you tomorrow, I think. Take care.